today, we are going to learn how to turn this into this. The process of taking music as audio, or more specifically drums as audio in this video, and turning it into printed or written music is called transcription. I've transcribed drum notation for Vic Firth on the VF Jams project, Zildjian for Zildjian Live, the Percussive Arts Society. I've made notation books with Aaron Spears, Aaron Sterling, Ash Stone, and many others. And today I'm gonna show you the exact workflow I used for drum transcriptions. <laughs> Transcribing can be an incredible way to deepen your learning and understanding of drumming, as well as a way to teach yourself how to demystify and figure out exactly what your favorite drummers are playing. Step number one, download the audio or video you want to transcribe. Step two, import this audio and or video into the program Transcribe. Now it's true, technically you don't have to download the audio or video and you don't have to use the program Transcribe, but this program allows you to slow down audio instantly without changing pitch, as well as very easily loop audio, which makes transcription much easier. It's invaluable at saving time. Many people, when they start to transcribe, waste a bunch of time scrubbing through Spotify or YouTube, trying to replay the three seconds that they're trying to transcribe. Step three, open up your notation software. I use Finale 25 because it's what I learned on and Finale is an industry standard, but there are a ton of free programs. MuseScore is probably the most popular. That's a great one to use. Or if you don't wanna learn a notation software, a simple pencil and staff paper will get you there. Step four, get context. Before you transcribe the whole piece, you're gonna wanna get a title of the transcription that you're working on, find the time signature of the performance, find the tempo, of the performance. And lastly, get context of the entire section or song that you'll be transcribing. Listen to the whole performance and look for meter changes, tempo changes, and anything big picture that might inform how you interpret this performance. Step five is transcribe the performance. The program transcribe makes it easier on you for a workflow because you can loop this, the measure that you're working on and infinitely loop it until you're ready to move on. This saves you a ton of time. So as I start to transcribe the first measure, I set the beginning of that measure and the end of that measure, I loop it, and I make sure to do this for every measure I work on. That way I can check my work against where the markers are dropped in transcribe. I set up this loop and let it play endlessly until I'm done with that measure. And then I slide the loop over and transcribe the next measure. Now, as I transcribe this notation, I'm not trying to transcribe the entire measure all at once in one listen. Every single measure I transcribe, I have a basic workflow to kind of take it apart chunk by chunk. I do this by taking different passes at the measure. As it's looping, the first time I'll listen and notate the basic rhythmic structure of the entire measure. Usually what I'm listening for here is hi-hat or ride cymbal as it plays normally in a groove through the entire measure. So I notate, are the hi-hats doing eighth notes, 16th notes, and I'll notate all of that out. Second, I'll go back through and find the kick and snare pattern after I have the basic kick and snare part. Third, I'll go through and I'll place all where all the ghost notes go. Fourth, I'll keep listening and do another pass and specifically look for articulation, accents, buzz strokes, things like that. And fifth and lastly on every measure, I'll go through and notate the stickings for the measure. So I do it piece by piece instead of trying to bite off the whole measure all at once. The last step, step six, is the final playthrough and export. Once I have the entire transcription done, I'll go through, set my playback and transcribe to 50% speed, and I'll read through my transcription while Transcribe plays the audio or video back at 50% speed. And this helps me just kind of check and make sure that I didn't miss anything or transcribe anything incorrectly. Once this last spot check is done, I print the transcription as a PDF out of Finale and you're done.